Hello there again, um, and welcome back to Whitey Go Speaks TV. And uh, today we have Winds of Thunder with us today at the Plug Pond Powwow in Haverville, Haverville, Massachusetts. And he's from the Pocono, Pocono Nation. Pocono Nation. Yeah. So, Winds of Thunder. Um, it's an honor to have you on Whitey Go Speaks TV. Um, so tell us, uh, tell us more about, you know, who you are. Who I am. Yes. Okay. Uh, I am the 10th generation great-grandson of the Master Sawyer Osamequin, who welcomed the pilgrims to this country. Uh, Master Sawyer is a title. It means great leader. He was the great leader of the largest Indian nation in colonial America. There were over 60 tribes, bands, and clans. He was also the father of Metacoma. You probably know him better historically as King Philip of the King Philip Wars. King Philip is my great grandfather, nine generations. And then I have a great grandfather whose name is Simeon Simons, six generations. He was the hand-picked bodyguard of General George Washington. When he came, came to Patchogue, Connecticut, he handpicked him to go with him that day, and he became a continental soldier, and it was the only man that he trusted while he slept to watch over him. He received a pension from the United States government as a continental soldier. And uh, he, Simeon Simons, was the great grandson of King Philip. If you look uh, in the town of Griswold, Connecticut, Town Hall, you see a portrait of Simeon Simon with George Washington. He is also on the bicentennial coin of the town of Griswold, Connecticut, 200 year celebration as a country, 1776 to 1976. They have the seal of Griswold on one side, and on the other side they have George Washington and Simeon Simon on a sterling silver coin riding horseback side by side. So that's my line, that's where I come from. That, that is, uh, we are known as the Council of Seven, Royal House of Poconoka, Poconoka Tribe of the Poconoka Nation. They, they call us Wampanoag today. We've taken back the name Poconoka. Poconoka. Uh, Wampanoag was a name that came about during the uh, King Philip War. And uh, the colonial government made it illegal for you to call yourself Poconoka because King Philip was burning towns to the ground trying to take back what they took from his father. And so the colonial government said if you were a male 14 years of age or older and you said you were Poconoka, they'd kill you on sight. Wow. And they started calling us Wampanoag. So if you look at the first 50 years of history with the colonial government, they never heard of the word Wampanoag. For the first 50 years, it's not in their record books, it's not in any, it wasn't spoken. It was something that came about during the King Philip War. And we have decided just this year that we are not going to be going by the name Wampanoag Nation anymore. We're going to back to our roots, Poconoka Nation. Okay? So if you look up any map prior to the King Philip War, you'll see right on it, it says Poconoka Country or King Philip Country, which is... King Philip was uh, from the Poconoka tribe. That's why sometimes you'll hear his name pronounced Po Medicom. And the Po prefix means of Poconoka. That's what the Po stands for. Oh. Yeah, that's who I am. Oh, okay. Right. Nice, nice. And uh, can you tell a little more, more about your regalia? My regalia? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am the Sagamore of the Poconoka nation. I'm also the Sagamore of the affiliated tribes in New England. And there's about five tribes that are involved in that and we're growing all the time. My regalia, you, you see a lot of wampum on it. And the more wampum you had um, in the day, uh, the early days here, the more important you were. So when they made my regalia, and I didn't make my regalia, I'm not that artistically inclined, uh, they put a lot of wampum on it. My uh, Beadwork was done by my niece, uh, uh, Venus Reels. Uh, you probably, uh, if you've ever been to the Pequot powwows, uh, she has done a lot of work for, for them and won a lot of awards. Uh, you know, she used to compete against uh, 
her, her friend at the time. They used to be first, second, first, second, so much that. Uh, <laughs> but that's uh, that's basically most of what I have on are, are either gifted to me by someone in the tribe, or my wife has done some of my regalia. My grandchildren have done some of you know different um, beads and things that I wear. Best plate. This was given to me by the clan uh, mother. You know, this was done by my great niece. So they, they, you know, this, this girl here, she does museum quality work, and you see, if you go to the Pequot Museum, you'll find a lot of her uh, work on display there. Okay. So, and how, how, um, um, like your grandchildren, you mentioned your grandchildren, um, and are they also in, heavily involved with? Uh, well, I have two that are Pioneer warriors. And Pionese is an elite warrior of the Poconoka tribe. Uh, they compared to they they compared them to the Roman uh, warriors. All right. Uh, there's a special uh, ritual that they go through in order to become a Pionese. And one of the things they do is they go uh, up at Mount Hope uh, and they spend three days and three nights there with no food and no water. They have to fend for themselves. That's just one of the things they do. And uh, basically, uh, I have uh, two Pioneses. Two of my grandsons are Pioneses. And I have two more that will be walking uh, probably next summer. You have to be 18 years of age to become a Pioneese. And that's an age when you determine whether or not you want to be uh, still a part of the tribe. Before that, you are because your parents are. But we don't force you to be a member of our tribe. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You actually are by blood, you know, birthright. Yeah. But I mean, if you don't want to be involved, we can't force you to be involved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, um, I know on the East Coast, you know, there's a lot of um, debate, okay, on uh, who's Indian, who's not Indian. Um, that's another, another big issue, um, basically around the nation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? What are my thoughts on that? I think that uh, we need to stop fighting against each other and uh, adopt and bring our people in. I mean, every other nationality has reached back and brought their people in. It's not, you know, whether it's a color thing, no matter what it is. I mean, I, I, don't forget, there was a, a law that was passed down south that if you had one drop of black blood and you were black. So you could be you could be Indian yeah. and they classified you as black. They're changing all of that. Mm -hmm. And there's a tribe, that's why these tribes down in Virginia just recently received federal yeah. recognition because they overturned all of that. There are laws that they made in this country against a Native American. They took away our language, mm -hmm. took away our culture. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't let us hunt in our own, you know, and wouldn't let us, you know, live in our own uh, uh, villages you know what I'm saying so and then they, they do the census and uh, uh, if you're not on a reservation yeah. they'll put you down as, uh, what they want to put you down for you know I had trouble registering my kids one was Indian one was white yeah. so you figure that out yeah. years later when I went to get the per, uh, birth certificate for her when she got a driver's license they had on an Indian and the reason why they had on an Indian because my father was Indian, my mother was Indian, so therefore my daughter was Indian. But they look at you and they determine what you are, and that's not right. right. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what the Native Americans have been up against in this country, you know, they, against the establishment. So I think it's time that we come together because there's strength in numbers, and united we stand, divided me, divided we fall. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Work together. You know, in mm -hmm. unity. You know, I mean, and um, and then that's you know that's um, and that's that's important. You know, it is to it doesn't matter where you come from. Mm -hmm. You know, what tribe you're from or who you are. You know, it's one heart, one mind, one right. spirit. Right. You know, and that's what's important. And um, um, so um, coming here today uh, to Plug Pond. Um, um, how many years have you been coming here? This is actually <laughs> this is actually my first time at Pluck Pond. Oh, okay. Harry, uh, my chief, yeah. he's he's come here quite a few years, mm -hmm. but the person who started this powwow here, Slow Turtle and Burn, mm -hmm. Slow Turtle was actually named by my mother's first cousin, Princess Redwing, who was the last Gwas Hm of our tribe. Mm -hmm. All right, and she's from the Weed and Simon line, but she also uh, spoke in the United Nations. 
Uh, she was the first Native American to address the United Nations. She was a personal pen pal of uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, and she was the squaw sachem of our tribe. We had all women chiefs, and we had men leaders, but we didn't have men chiefs. I'm the first male chief in this tribe since King Philip's death. All right. Even Simeon Simon, my great grandfather, he was a leader. He wasn't a chief because they were afraid to say they were Poconokan. All right. So we had all woman chiefs. Princess Red Wing, uh, she died, I think, in 1988. But she was recognized by the Council of Chiefs on the East Coast as the Squaw Station of Poconoke. So we had woman chiefs. Oh, wow. And that goes back to the King Philip War, too. We had woman chiefs because uh, Weedamu, who was the Squaw Station of the Picasso tribe, mm -hmm. she was married to Warm Sutter, who was the Master Sawyer's son. And her sister, Wontanuski, who was my great grandmother, nine generations, was married to King Philip, met a common. Oh. So there was two brothers married to two sisters. And when Weedamu was married to Warm Sutter, she was the queen of the Poconoke Nation, not Wampanoag, Poconoke Nation. When Warm Sutter was poisoned in Plymouth, yeah. then Wontanuski, her sister, became the queen of the Poconoke Nation. Oh. All right? So okay. that's my life. Wow. Yeah. Very interesting. I mean, um, you know, and the people that we do have on Radio Speaks TV, you know, they have, they bring interesting stories, you know, stories that you don't even know, you know. But this is all written in history. You, uh -huh. you, don't, you don't have to take my word for it. Yeah. This, is written, this is in the uh, deposit, the repositories of Brown, Yale, Harvard. This, they wrote about the history. We didn't write about the history. They wrote about the history. And so this, you can read about this at any, any time. Just go on, go on to the website and you'll read the history of what happened in this country. Okay? okay. And so what I'm telling you is, uh, is uh, recorded, you know, and it, and it is accepted. Yeah. Another thing that you might not know is that the, the Massasoit, uh, Osamequin, was also the acknowledged head of the Nipmonk Quaybog Nation. Nipmonk, Nipmonk, right. And, uh, you know, uh, his wife was the queen of the Nipmonk. It was Nana Wadhat's daughter. Huh. All right? And so uh, that's why if you read the history, you'll find that Warm Sutter made the statement to the English that the Nipmonk belonged to him because he fought, he fought uh, Uncas over them in the, in the year 1661. I think it was 1661 or 1660. He fought Uncas over the Nipmucks. He said the Nipmuck belonged to me. Oh. And that's anyone that knows their history, they know that he was acknowledged. You could go read the history in the town of Brookfield, Brookfield, Mass, West Brookfield, Mass, North Brookfield, Mass. Mm -hmm. It's written right in the archives that he was the acknowledged head of that nation also. So a lot of people, you know, they say, well, how, you know, how did your territory go all the way up to uh, New York State, this side of the Hudson River, Scattercook Falls? Okay. Southern Vermont, Southern New Hampshire. Yeah. That was all known as Cape Phillips territory, the Massasoit territory, all the way down to Cape. Now, everybody knows about this side, yeah. but going up that side there, if you go up to uh, Mount Monadnock in the town of Monadnock, New Hampshire, yeah. you'll find in that mountain they have the King Philip Trail. Why do you think it's the King Philip Trail there? Hmm? Uh, Why isn't it some other chief's name right. on that trail? Because it was our territory. All right, that's where he was. He was up there during his winter retreat with Kanachet, the chief of the Narragansetts, planning his, you know, the war on the English. Okay, but you you can read it. You don't have to take my word for it. You can read the history. It's written. So what I'm telling you is common knowledge by scholars, you know, in this country mm -hmm. or, or our educators. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and that's another thing <laughs> I'd like to bring up too is is when you mentioned that, um, well, you know. Um, it's uh, documented in, in Yale, Harvard, um, Harvard mm -hmm. and uh, Brown University. Brown University. Yep, the, Ivy League, the Ivy League schools, because they were the first uh, uh, institutions of high learning in this country. Mm -hmm. And actually, those institutions were started for Native Americans. Native Harvard was started for Native Americans. Sukanuku, who was Philip's younger brother, went to Harvard. All right? Okay. But... You were supposed to be able to go to those schools mm -hmm. and get a free education. Don't forget, they were converting us to their way of thinking. Right. Yeah. And learning their language and their, you know, their religion. And so some of the first converts came out of my family's line, uh, the Simon line, believe it or not. They were, 
passes, uh, you know, in the uh, in the, uh, Narragansett Church. One of, one of the uh, early passes was assignment from my mother's family. Oh. You know, I'm from the Simon Wheaton line. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. So there's a lot of history here. I mean, <laughs> um, you know, and you know, from um, I know the people in the Midwest. You know, uh, from my nation, the Go Nation, and uh, you know, this is is very interested to them. You know, because you know, they don't really, you know, talk. Right, right. That's yeah. true. Well, Pocomoke is the most written about tribe in the history of this country. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, this is where it all started. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the tribe that welcomed the pilgrims in this country, mm -hmm. the Master Sawyer. Yeah. All right. We're talking about the tribe that gives you the the Thanksgiving that you celebrate. Yeah. Now you know there there are dissidents on that there, but the first uh, that actual first Thanksgiving was in October. Mm -hmm. That was our that was our uh, uh, harvest Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. One of our Nakomos. It was the harvest in October. Abraham Lincoln changed that around and made it November. Mm. All right, but mm -hmm. before that, that was just uh, just our harvest Thanksgiving. We were thanking our Creator for the crops, and we fed the English because they had such a hard winter that you know they were getting ready to go back to England. But we actually fed them; they didn't feed us. Right. You know, and Philip, if I'm not mistaken, bought I think it was eight deer that he bought to that that feast. Oh wow! All right, uh -huh. so I mean, but you can read that in history yeah. also. Uh -huh. I think and. Uh, they would it'd be on the Pometacom though. They'd call it Pometacom or Pometacom. Okay. And the, like I say, the prefix po means of Poconoka. So you'll find a lot of times when they talk about Philip, if they have Pometacom, that's who they're talking about. Oh. Metacom. Okay. All right. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. So again, you know, thank you. Uh, <coughs> card sick. Thank you, Wind of Thunder. For yeah. being on White Eagle Speaks TV, my it's pleasure. an honor. My pleasure. You know. It's an honor to be here yeah. and be interviewed. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank <laughs> you.